Joining us for, oh, I don't know, a while is uh, Shreveport City Councilman Michael Corbin. A pleasure, as always. Thank you for, for wandering in. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. So, House Bill 667. You fur it, you again it. Not, really? that, not that you get a vote. <laughs> uh, for anybody who doesn't know what that is, and it's been all over social media, uh, social media the last four or five days, explain as best, and you join in also. Oh, yeah. Explain to everybody what Cedric Glover's HB 667 is. Obviously, this bill's been floating around Baton Rouge for a little bit. Uh, it's really just come to light here in, in the local community well, in the last few a, days. There was a version that passed in 2015 that Mr. Seabaugh told us was a Roy Burrell that was sort of the same thing but involved nine members on a redevelopment authority. And by the time it got amended and hacked up and voted and passed it, it's never been implemented Mm -hmm. because it really can't do anything, which I think is a great idea. But please continue. Well, well, that's right. There is a bill that's in place um, that uh, Representative Burrell uh, worked through the legislature. It had a larger board. Uh, There were some problems, evidently, uh, with getting that board filled out and and the makeup of it. And so now it has reappeared uh, this year in in this year's session and made its way through the House um, with a smaller board uh, appointed uh, by the mayor. And there is some additional authorities in there that will allow taxing and bonds. It would be a five-member board. Three of the members of this redevelopment authority would be appointed by the Shreveport mayor, one member appointed by the Shreveport chamber, and one member appointed by the shreveport Bossier African American chamber. Correct. Explain to everybody, because it seems from what we've looked at it, that it would be property tax, that they could call for a property tax vote by the people Anytime they wanted. Am I missing that? Tell me tell me what the what this board would have the power to do, as you understand. Well, let's back up just a little bit. The board what the bill does is and we'll take the Allendale community as a start. There's acres and acres of property there that is abandoned. Uh, mm-hmm. You can't get a clear title to it. And so the whole purpose of a redevelopment agency is to bank or gather property, get clear title to it, and good example would be if we could get a hundred contiguous acres, rip out all the infrastructure, rip out the streets, come to a developer and say, here is a hundred acres. We want you to develop this into mixed use residential. And he would have a clear title. We'd start with a fresh piece of property and begin to build back some, some decaying communities. From that idea, with now, the problem <laughs> is the, the problem is the current bill and the need to raise property taxes to support some of the some of the operations, uh, the ability if there is money flow within the redevelopment agency to issue revenue bonds, uh, and I think that that's. We're not there yet. Let's get the basics in place first. Let's find a way to gather some of these properties, see if there's some interest in it with with our local uh, or regional developers, and then if we need to do other things, we can. But wait, aren't all the things you just talked about, and you're a, a very smart man, aren't all the things you just talked about things the city council can do right now if you wanted to? We can. It's a little more burdensome, burdensome right now, uh, the way some of the laws are written. And I think the way this started out is patterning, uh, patterning laws after what happened in New Orleans following Katrina. Uh, there was a lot of vacant property down there, and there needed to be a way to clear that property up and allow it to be redeveloped. Uh, that idea has just grown and grown, and there's not been a lot of discussion about it. Is it unfair to say that the way the Glover Bill is written gives the mayor way too much power? I think it not only gives the mayor too much power, I think it creates another political subdivision. Uh, It would be very similar to the port or Biomed, who has the ability to go out and and propose a tax uh, and do bonds and things like that. I'm not sure that in this case we need another political subdivision that has those abilities if we simply want to be able to go out and gather some land. You may have heard Representative Seaball earlier say that, you know, this is something the mayor does absolutely support, and she's hoping that it passes. Um, Were you given a heads up that they were pushing for this and these changes? The city council has not been briefed on on what the mayor supports in this legislative session. Uh, 
in general or this bill specifically. Uh, there may have been some conversations with individual council members, but there's not been a conversation with this council member. You are you you just said something big. Do you mean to tell me that the mayor of our city has not briefed the council on bills we're pushing this session or bills we want passed or we we support? That is correct. Is that something That's pretty typical that that happens? Well, it's something that we would like. Certainly, um, you know, anything that's in the city's interest is not only in the mayor's interest, but it's also in the council's because uh, we're the ones who the council members are who interacts with the public. And uh, certainly over the last five days, I've received numerous phone calls and emails or, you know, stopped in the store while, while grocery shopping. And, hey, what about this bill? Tell me, tell me what you know about it, where did it come from? So I think that it's just some good government uh, to have that interaction, have everybody on the same page and at least have the same information. And, and we're lacking that right now. For Representative Glover to tell me, and, and, and we were texting about this bill last week, for him to tell me that he will defer talking about it to the city administration um, leads you to believe that they that was their idea, they pushed for it, um, and they want... what. What benefit does it have for me as a resident of Shreveport? I cannot go to these redevelopment people and say, no, do not put another tax on me. Don't even ask me to vote on it. Well, I think that um, that was an interesting statement from Representative Glover. Um, Obviously, by that statement, it tells us that he that he's carrying a bill through for the administration. that is not that unusual. That happens, you know, from time to time. Pardon me. Do, do, do you think that? Do you think this is a Cedric bill or do you think this is a Shreveport based bill? Where do you think that started? Who do you think uh, called who and said, scratch my back? I really do think it's a Shreveport based or originated bill. Um because there's been discussions about what to do with the redevelopment agency since before I came on council. Uh, how do you, how do we form one? How it's, what's the best way to do it? Now the issue comes back to if it would be much better if our local legislative delegation was all in support of it. And when you see our local legislative delegation split, then that raises some questions.